Thanks to MPB for sponsoring today's video. So you might have just seen the little the little post there. We're doing a hike up a mountain. Make sure I don't say fell here in the Cairngorms called Miel Avukala, which means the Shepherd's Hill, and it is a Corbett, so much like in the Lake District where you have Wayne Wright's 214 mountains or fells. Here in Scotland, they have, of course, their own versions. So they have things like the Munros, which are the main ones, the big boys, anything over 3,000 foot. And then they have the Corbett's, which, if I'm honest, I find it a little bit confusing to understand. So yeah, from what I can gather, anyone correct me if I'm wrong with this, but a Corbett is anything that's in between two and a half thousand feet and three thousand feet. And there has to be a 500 foot drop off one side of it or all sides of it, I don't know. So it, obviously it can't go above three thousand foot or else then it, then it becomes a Munro. But even the Munros confuse me because you've got things like Munro tops, which I think can't class as a Munro because they're too close to other Munros. I don't know, I don't know. It's all a bit confusing, but that's probably just me because uh, I think every time I come to Scotland, I'm just in awe of the place. And it's, I think it's not until this trip I've actually sat down and thought, right, what's the story with these Munros? What do they actually mean? And yeah, it's fried my head a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I think today's gonna be a good one. It shouldn't be too big, maybe a four hour loop. I've got plans and we're in single digits in the temperatures. It is nine degrees Celsius. So we've got one of, the, one of the bigger jackets on. And same as in last week's video, when I brought the gloves out with me, I just get so excited. I've got a new hat and everything. Look at this, look at this hat. These come down and cover the ears if it gets a bit windy. Oh, I am excited. I'm looking forward to this winter so much. So in reference to last week's video where it was my first photo shoot with my new Olympus OM5, I'm just going to call it Olympus. Can't be doing with this OM system thing even though it says it on the front of the bloody thing but yeah, Olympus I'm going to stick with. Um, I made a little bit of a mistake throughout the whole morning, the whole shoot which was about three or four hours and that is, hopefully none of you has noticed because that will be a good sign, but I shot at ISO 1250 the whole morning without realizing so yeah i got the images home put them into lightroom and i just saw it up in the top right you know where the histogram is and it said iso 1250 and i was thinking oh goodness me man what a wally but i don't think the images look particularly noisy or anything like that so like i said i think it's probably a good sign that well i didn't notice and maybe some of you didn't notice as well fingers crossed so I've got the camera on the Peak Design clip to start off the adventure and I've deliberately put it into manual mode and I've put it onto ISO 200 which is pretty much the base ISO that the OM5 goes down to and it's there ready and waiting to be used and uh, yeah like I said a second ago I am looking forward to this one I do not do enough hikes when I come to Scotland. Oh, and by the way, look at this. This is a big deal for me. This, this is probably not a big deal for some, but it is for me. No tripod whatsoever today. Certainly not my big tripod, not even my little travel one. No tripods. Just the OM5 and its wonderful image stabilisation. Stabilisation. Living the dream. Wow, look at that, look at that. Got to get the camera out here, I think. So, as it always is, a little bit of a tricky one to compose. Main problem I was having was the path. I didn't want the pathway in the composition 
So as you can see, I've come over this way a little bit, which has completely changed the scene. But I quite like it from this perspective. The two things that really caught my eye were this big pine tree on the right hand side, quite obviously, and then just this general area of autumnal colour. So I think from this perspective, we're getting both of those elements. And yeah, just in a bit of a square crop, perhaps something like that, I quite like, focused on that tree there. Aperture priority, f5.6, 1 60th of a second, and ISO 200, not ISO 1250. So that one's the square crop that you see in there. I think that's probably gonna be the one, but I'm gonna move myself left ever so slightly and try an image in a three by two aspect ratio and just something a little bit different. I love it when you can see some of the root systems, you know, where they're just sort of exposed overground a little bit. To be fair, I suppose that's from footfall, isn't it? So perhaps not a good thing, but yeah, you can see off in the distance there, that's where we're headed to that hill. So let's crack on. So the area that we're in at the minute is called Glenmore Forest. And yeah, if you ever come to this area of the Cairngorms near to Aviemore, um, and you're around Loch Morlich, which I would recommend in its own right, just have a little look on the maps and stuff and you'll soon realise that this whole area is just so brilliant for landscape photography, honestly. I mentioned it briefly in last week's video, I think I was talking about the Cairngorms as a whole really, but the variety around here is just incredible in a tiny, tiny little area that is yeah, generally centred around Aviemore, the town. But yeah, Glenmore Forest is brilliant. Very coniferous, so a lot of pine trees as you've seen, but there are a lot of patches of deciduous woodland as well. And a lot of deciduous trees and stuff intermingled, if you will, with all of the pine trees and the coniferous lot. But uh, yeah, it makes it brilliant for this time of year around autumn and then Winter, goodness me, if you can get here when there's a little bit of snowfall, unbelievable. I'll pop an image up on the screen here. That's a, obviously an extreme winter photograph that I got last year, and I really like that image. And uh, yeah, that was obviously when there was some heavy snowfall. That image is in my calendar, my 2024 calendar, of which I have a select few left for purchase. So if you'd like to purchase one and support me, I'll leave a link in the video description below. But yeah, this is a wonderful area for landscape photography. So I can perhaps start giving you a bit of a better idea of the route and the geography of this area now. We are gonna head obviously up this path here and then around onto our mountain across all the way around. And we're gonna do a little bit of a loop. We're gonna go past another smaller loch called An Lochan Uane, which means the green Lochan, I suppose. And that is gonna be really interesting. It's a bit of a green color, believe it or not. And then right over there, you can see a little bit of the wonderful Loch Morlich that I just photographed and that I was talking about before. So hopefully you can see that by the time we get up to our mountain there, although we're gonna be coming out of Glenmore Forest or Glenmore Forest Park, we are gonna have some wonderful views down towards all of the trees and everything else. So yeah, still looking great for the photography. I'll tell you what, the conditions are pretty nice as well. You've probably been able to see that the light is somewhat coming and going from up there, from between the clouds. And really this time of year, I couldn't really be asking for too much more. Oh, and by the way, I have got my Trang gear with me again today to give it another go. I've got my same kimchi noodles just to see if we can make it work this time. It is a little bit breezy, but I'm really hoping that I can have my friggin' noodles and use my friggin' Trang gear in today's video. Fingers crossed. So a little fun fact for you, as we're now 
ascending away from the trees and the woodland. Scots pine trees, which are most of the trees that you can see over here, are the most common coniferous tree in the world. How about that? That's a good fact. <sighs> I just read it on a sign. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's news to me, but quite a cool little fact that is, I think. And I reckon, along with probably silver birch trees, my favourite trees in the world as well. To photograph, I suppose. That's what I'm thinking as a photographer. And it comes back to something I always talk about and I've mentioned a lot recently. If I'm being honest with you, because this is just me being honest, I wouldn't have cared less about trees and silver birch trees and Scots pine trees. I wouldn't have been bothered at all. But photography, landscape photography, has just opened my eyes to how beautiful the natural world is. And yeah, like I've said a lot recently, I've just, I just love that we see the world through our camera lenses, really. You know, yeah, I just look at everything very differently than what I used to. And I absolutely adore that. With regards to the tree fact, I think when I say common, I meant widespread. I don't know if there's more Scots pines than any other trees in the world. I mean widespread. It said on the sign they're in the Arctic Circle, they're in Spain, they're in Siberia, they're up high in mountainous areas. Yeah, just, just to get that clear. Right, let's continue. <laughs> ah, you know what? I keep stopping. I keep stopping. This is going to be a long walk because, well, firstly, the surroundings are just gorgeous. But secondly, and I'm glad I'm going to hear myself say this, it's just brilliant having the camera so accessible, not having to think about my tripod, just seeing the opportunity for a photograph and taking it. Even if I don't feel 100% confident that the image is going to work out, just taking it. So right over Loch Morlich that you can see there, there's a couple of prominent peaks right off in the distance. One of them being Scoran Dove Moor and some really beautiful light on him at the minute. And it's that kind of gorgeous mixture of light on the peaks of a mountain and moody dark clouds just above said mountain. And it's given me a really good opportunity to use my telephoto lens, although it's not strictly just a telephoto lens, but to use the 12 to 200 millimeter right in at 200 millimeters. So brilliant. I'll show you that image now. And it is, I'll tell you what it is. It's right down my street as a landscape photography in the mountains is concerned. So you may be able to see just around about here, a few little figures. Some people are not too far from the top now, just to give you hopefully a little bit of scale. If you could even see them right up there, they look tiny, but soon enough that will be us. And it's come to that time where I want to make a little bit of a move, make a little bit of progress now. So I'll see you a bit further up. And you can see there behind me now, we're getting some glorious views of, well, the whole of Loch Morlich actually. Conditions are really, really beautiful, albeit very windy. <laughs> and um, yeah, real extensive views of, oh, goodness me, of the Glenmore Forest Park as well down there. It is just always so wonderful to be out in the mountains. And yeah, not too far from the old top now. Oh goodness, so I hope you can hear me all right. As you've just seen, we've just been at the summit. There's a few people up there, so I don't want to, um, <laughs> I don't want to disturb them. But yeah, the views are pretty much the same from this little flank. Incredible vistas of, well, some of the highest peaks in the whole of the Cairngorms and actually in the whole of Scotland as well. And look at the light and the clouds, the conditions, absolutely beautiful. But the wind, as is so often the case, has has so often been the case recently. Oh, it is pretty strong and quite biting as well. In fact, I'll tell you what it's time for. The time has come. The little ear sections of the new hat are coming down. I'll clip it in in a minute. Oh, I will tell you what. 
that is cosy. So we're going to make our way further down this flank now, continue the loop walk, hopefully find somewhere to have our noodles and yeah, a good two or three things that I think are going to be really interesting on the way back down and hopefully we'll get to a point as well where there should be a lot of autumnal colour. But for now, I'm going to make my way down here and just keep an eye on this beautiful mountain range here. And of course, think about the photography because that light is changing so fast. The conditions are changing so quickly. Ah, and the clouds are just absolutely gorgeous. What a hill. What a treat. <laughs> so I've somehow managed to just lose the path completely. Uh, I'm not too far away from it, but as you can see, I'm off piece down here in all of this heather. Oh, I'm living the dream. I always do it. I get carried away with something, usually photography or the views or eating. I don't know. Plenty of different things. And I just find myself ages away from the path, off piste. <sighs> This is actually a bit annoying because this is this is quite dense, this heather. Look at this, man. This is dense, dense stuff. So I can't even really see the path, but you could sort of see the route we're going to go. Well, it's probably in this little V shape down here, isn't it, somewhere? And then we're going to go round through that valley where you can see a lot of the trees off there in the background. And that's where we're going to be doing our loop all the way back around this mountain. But yeah. For now, get back to the path and out of this dense heather. There's the path here. You can see the rocks. Oh man, even the path itself isn't very, isn't very um, visible by the looks of it. But yeah, that was grim. Right, we're finally back on the loop track. Well, nearly. And uh, we'll keep making our way around because there's still quite a fair bit to see on this route. But I think now I have to make a little bit. Ah, there's the path. There's a the little beauty. Make a little bit of progress because, because of all that nonsense, I'm a little bit behind schedule now. But, oh, oh, there we go. We are finally back. On the path, what an absolute treat. That was a bit grim, but we're okay. Now we're back on the loop as well. So a few more things to see. Oh, actually, you can probably just about see and lock and Uain just over there. Look at all that scree as it comes down. That is the green lock. And even from here, you can just about tell he's got a little bit of a green hue to him. Absolutely brilliant. So we'll be down there. You can see there's a few little autumnal looking trees dotted about, but first, We've got what is Rivo and Bothy, um, which is just, yeah, the small building you can see there quite near the puddles. And for anyone that doesn't know what a Bothy is, it is essentially just a small purpose-built building, generally out in remote mountainous areas where people can get shelter and cook up a little bit of food. They can even sleep there. There's generally some like platforms where you can put out your sleeping mat and stuff like that. And some of them, they've even got fires and people leave stuff as well. Sometimes even food and alcohol. Um, but yeah, we'll go and have a look at him and maybe think about the noodles. Although at the minute, if I'm being honest, I don't feel that hungry. So it may be another trip without using the tram gear and without having me noodles. God, they'll be going off soon. <laughs>
There we go, we're in. What a gaff, man. Oh, it's so echoey. <laughs> Look at this, we've got a little fire down here. You can probably imagine how cosy it'd be, man. And yeah, I mean, people have got some stuff in here. They've perhaps gone on some nice little walks and um, Look at this, we've got some Nando's Perrinets up there. I'll tell you what, what a spot. We've got some beans, some baked beans. We, we even got a mirror. Look at this, you can get yourself ready. <laughs> get yourself ready for your hike. Nice little map of Britain there. Oh, what a beast. So cool, I've actually never stayed in a bothy before. Um, I think probably just because I'm quite an introverted lad. Um, I'd rather be out. I'd rather be out there all on my own in a tent getting battered by the winds, but uh, you know what? Ah, quite a nice little photograph, that, isn't it? Looking out into the highlands. So yeah, if you've never seen a bothy before, this is a bothy. <laughs> mm, look at this, a little notepad here, look. Pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, should we find one? Let's let's find one to read. 26th of December 2022, Boxing Day, of course. It is night stay, lovely warm fire, chestnuts, hot chocolate, and what are we talking here? What does that say? M-I-C-E. What's mice? M oh, mice. Right, brilliant. <laughs> I thought he was carrying on with, um, you know, food or condiments. Nice. Um, should we actually write something in it? Hang on. Let's go. Passing by... Uh, by with my new hat. Hat. That'll do us, Henry. That is some literature there. That is unbelievable reading. Perhaps someone will come here in a year's time and they'll be absolutely stunned by that descriptive writing there from me. Absolutely amazing. Right, so goodbye to our lovely little bothy. Um, I suppose that's pretty cool, you know, if none of you have seen a bothy before or what they do or what they're for. They are really cool. And I suppose in a pinch, you know, these places can get really grim. These places, these, these places are very, very remote. And if the weather changes, which it does <laughs> every, every second um, at times, that could be, I suppose, a lifesaver as well as just a nice little social place to be at times with like-minded people and that, you know. And a place to sleep. And a place to have some Perrinets. Nando's. Right, let's get a bit further down now. Gosh, that wind's picked up. And yeah, we're going to see the Green Lochen or An Lochen Uane. So I found this walk in the, or on the Walk Highlands website which is a brilliant resource for um well any walks that you might like to do in the highlands it's a fantastic website and i'll put the link to this particular walk in the video description below if you want to check it out but they say that this loop is a bit of an easier one if you're not used to hiking in the cairngorms it's a good hike to do if you haven't done any of the munros the bigger mountains and things like that and after doing it we're not too far from the end now i can probably vouch for that you know, it's all in moderation. What's easy for me might be really difficult for somebody else that's out there. But yeah, as, as, as far as my hiking experience goes, that felt pretty easy. It's paved the whole way, if you stay on the path that is, unlike myself. And with it, without it being too difficult, you still get extensive views like you've seen, seen. And it really does feel like a mountain. Changeable weather, you definitely still need the right gear on and everything like that. But yeah, I'll put a link to this loop in the video description below if you want to go and find it. It has been brilliant so far. <laughs> what an absolute beast of a tree that is really cool really unusual as well so there we go and lock and or the green lake hopefully you can see 
a little bit of that green hue even more so from down here, but yeah, I'm sure you'll agree. Absolutely beautiful. Now at the minute, at least, I'm not really seeing anything to photograph, which probably sounds really daft. A lot of you are probably thinking, Henry, mate, are you, is everything all right with you? Get to look at that scene behind you. Uh, but I just, I think it's that age old thing, isn't it? With landscape photographers that just because everything looks nice, just because it might look photogenic even, doesn't necessarily mean that there's a photograph to be had. I actually got this image last winter with the drone, if that's not extremely obvious. And I quite liked that one. I felt like it captured the isolation, the remoteness of this area pretty well and the bleakness, if you can really use that word, because this is um, very, very vibrant <laughs> at the minute, but in the winter, it did feel a lot more bleak. Right, I'm gonna just wander around a little bit because I'm not convinced that there isn't a photograph here. <laughs> so I've just grabbed a quick photograph of, I suppose the scene that you can see behind me really, big Scots pine tree trunk here in the foreground. And then hopefully you can see through the gap there as the branch of this pine leans into the loch and there's just a very vibrant, one of those really vibrant autumnal trees, isolated, looking really nice. And then a couple of, you know, see, look at all this root system and that down there. That is incredible. And a couple of extra Scots pine trees. I'm not sure if it's going to come out okay. There are, are they still there? Yeah, a few people off in the background as well. I will gladly Photoshop those out and uh, just to make it feel a little bit more isolated. But I don't know, perhaps that's going to be okay. I'll pop it up on the screen for you to see now. You can be the judge. <laughs> um, I did bump the ISO up a little bit as well. I think it was on ISO 800, just so I could get about one two hundredth of a second shutter speed because, as it has been all day, it's been very, very windy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it still is, but I, I'm glad. I'm glad I got that little shot from down at the Lochen because I definitely wanted one that wasn't just the drone photograph. Look at that through the trees there. You can certainly see how this little Lochan got his name. So this is the sort of main section of the little Lochan there where we saw those people before. Gosh, it looks so green even from here, doesn't it? That is class. Uh, but if you ever come here, obviously have a good little look at the Lochan. But opposite here is this little path. In fact, the walk that we're on tells us to go down that way. Directly opposite, I'm going to spin you around again, directly opposite the little loch and, and that actually takes you up some of those cliffs that we've been looking at the whole time. And it is a really, really nice walk, definitely worth it. Uh, but I'm going to go down this nice little flat section here. Um, I don't really know why. <laughs> I've been up that way before. The conditions aren't as nice as they were earlier as well. And I think I'm going to make a bit of a beeline to get back to the car because I'm quite hungry. And as always seems to be the case at this stage, I don't really fancy my noodles. So yeah, back to the car for now. <laughs> see if we see anything on the way. Look at this little section down here. Just unbelievable for, I suppose, tree photography, woodland, autumn. Just look at that through there. You could just wander around there for days and days with your camera. And obviously in this part of the world, this part of Scotland, with the weather conditions being so changeable, everything would just look so different all the time. In fact, down there, really close to where we are now, this is where I got that snow photograph of the Scots pine tree that I was showing you earlier. And I really do like that photograph. But yeah, it is quality down there if you're ever you know, wanting to come down here with your camera. So I've still got one, I suppose, one more sort of photograph in my head that I'd like to get, and that is a bit of a woodland scene, maybe something quite intimate. I might have to come off this path to find it, but uh, we've still got about 20 minutes before we get back to the car, and I'm gonna keep the old peepers peeled. As we move on, I would love to say another massive thank you to MPB for kindly sponsoring today's video. 
Really grateful for their support. Most of you know who they are. If not, I'm here to tell you all about them. And MPB is an online platform that you can use to buy or sell used photography or videography equipment. And I've used them loads myself to buy and sell. Buying from them is brilliant. They've got really competitive prices and they've got a fantastic grading system as well where they will thoroughly check the gear that they're selling to you or to us and they will actually take a photograph of the exact piece of gear that you are buying from them. So much peace of mind when you're buying used. I'm sure you'll agree. Time for an eye drop in a minute. <laughs> and actually where MPB come into the room is selling to them. Again, this is something that I've done loads. I actually sold my Nikon Z30 to MPB recently. And I think the thing is, is they just make it so easy. They will send a courier to your house to pick the piece of gear up or the various pieces of gear, whatever it is, free of charge. They pay for it. All you've got to do is box it up. And I just think that's fantastic. So, you know, if you've got stuff lying around the house that's just gathering dust, you may as well sell it. Get a bit more money for some newer gear or for trips, you know, things like this. Get yourself out somewhere new. Yeah, so really big fan of them. I'll leave a link in the video description. Please do go and check them out and they come highly recommended from me. Right, let's see if we can get this little woodland scene. The pressure's on. So as you can see, it's all starting to look very coniferous and evergreen and not much autumn color at all until that little splash of vibrance just through there so i'm not really seeing a photograph here it's, it's really messy as i'm sure you'll agree but it's piqued my curiosity enough for me to just want to follow this tiny little trail here just to see if i can find something because this could be the intimate woodland photograph that i'm looking for but as always there's a bit of work to be done just yet oh this is looking a bit squelchy <laughs> Nah, I'm leaving it behind, man. I'm forcing it, I'm forcing it. Plus I've got to go proper off piste going through that woodland there. And after what happened earlier when I was on the mountain and I lost the path and I was off piste for about half an hour, oh, I just don't fancy, but look, there's some little pockets and, oh. as a photographer, you just see things, don't you? You just look and think, oh, there could be something up there. That's what it's all about. And then you go off exploring like a dafty, ticks all over the gaff. Ah, oh, that does look nice actually. Look at that tree in the midst of all those pine trees there. That's vibrant. That is beautiful. I'm leaving you. I know what I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm not being honest with myself. I'm hungry. And this is starting to become a theme of the ending of my videos, is it not? I need to leave you because I'm hungry. No good man. I need to bring food out of me. Stop relying on these noodles. That I'm never going to eat. Maybe next week. We'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate your support very much. Please drop a comment down below. I love to hear from you. And if you do have a quick second, please hit the thumbs up button. It proper helps me out. And more than anything, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, if you enjoy it, of course, that will be most wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.